What's going on everybody? Kalipas Tech here, coming back at you with another video. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Cricut Dream 5G and going over whether or not it's a good phone to buy in 2021. Now, before we go any further, I do wanna remind you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It helps out the channel a lot. But with that being said, let's get into the video. Now this phone has a 6.82 inch LCD display, definitely on the larger side. So if you're doing any kind of content consumption, like streaming videos, viewing photos, playing games, all that sort of stuff, even just reading, you're gonna have a really good experience on this display because everything is gonna show up a lot larger. So definitely keep that in mind. For the resolution, we got a 720p resolution with a PPI of 263 and an aspect ratio of 20 and a half by nine. So a little bit taller than the average phone these days, which again is gonna be a good thing for content consumption because of course, if you're watching a video or something like that in this kind of orientation, it's just gonna look a lot better. Right now, I do have the brightness at 100% and I would say overall, the display looks really nice despite only being 720p, that really does not stop it from being a high quality display. And really the biggest advantage this phone has over other phones in this price range is the size. These days, having a large display is nothing special. I wanna say most phones nowadays have at least a six and a half inch display, but this one is definitely larger than that. So it's gonna be a solid choice if your primary use of your phone is gonna be stuff like streaming videos. In addition to this, the phone has a nice, decently modern look. It doesn't look very premium, but at the same time, it is still a good looking phone. I'm not a huge fan of the bezel at the bottom, or the water drop notch for the front facing camera. But these are all pretty normal things you find in an entry level phone. And this of course is an entry level phone. So that's not too surprising. Now for the front facing camera, this camera is 13 megapixels. So not too bad. For storage, this phone has 64 gigabytes of internal storage with micro SD card expansion. Definitely not bad. I've seen plenty of phones around this price range with only 32. But on the other hand, there are some in the same price range with 128. So it's a real middle ground. I don't think 64 gigabytes is bad at all. For most people, it'll be fine. But if you are a power user, then you might want a little bit more space. And that's the thing about this phone. I feel like a lot of different aspects of this phone set it up to appeal more to power users. And because of that, I'm not quite sure why they didn't just give it 128. But at the same time, objectively 64 gigabytes isn't that bad, especially if you're only using your phone for more everyday tasks, like sending text messages, making calls, browsing the web, that kind of stuff. In that case, you're not gonna have a ton of different apps like games and stuff and you won't have a ton of things taking up storage. Even if you do have lots of photos and videos, you can always get a micro SD card. That's always an option. So it's really not that big a deal. But at the same time, it would have been nice to see 128 instead. Now, surprisingly, this phone does have wireless charging, which is really unusual for an entry level phone. In fact, you usually only see that feature with flagship phones. So seeing that an entry level phone like this has wireless charging is definitely impressive. For security options, we don't have face unlock on this phone, unfortunately, but if you do want a fingerprint scanner, then you'll be happy to know that this phone does have one. Let's give it a try real quick and see how well it works. There we go, one more time. And there we go. As you can see, it's real fast and responsive. I have no complaints here. Now for the rear camera setup, we got a 48 megapixel main camera, an eight megapixel ultra wide camera, a two megapixel macro camera, and a two megapixel depth sensing camera for portrait mode. So this phone has pretty much every camera feature available to non-flagship phones. And again, I can't stress enough, this is a really entry level phone. So seeing that this phone has a 48 megapixel main camera and all these different features is super impressive. If you're looking for a phone to take some high quality pictures for social media, or maybe even something more professional, this phone is definitely gonna be a good option because it has all kinds of different features and not to mention really good photo quality. This photo was taken with the main camera and as you can see, it is a really nice photo. The lighting wasn't the greatest just because it was a cloudy day, but regardless, 
the picture still looks great. Sure, the colors could be a little bit more vibrant, but that's really nitpicky and you can always fix stuff like that in an editor. Overall, the photo is really good, especially when you consider the tier this phone is in. Now, this photo was taken with portrait mode. Now, you'll probably notice there are a few spots where there's a little bit of distortion where the background wasn't quite blurred properly, but at the same time, I'm still impressed. For the most part, the picture looks really professional and the little blemishes in this photo are are unlikely to happen every time you use portrait mode. This was probably more of a one-off thing. So really, if you do wanna use portrait mode frequently to take some nice pictures for social media and stuff like that, then I do think this phone will work out really well. This photo was taken with the ultra wide camera, yet another really nice photo. No distortion around the edges like you typically see in more entry level ultra wide cameras. The quality is definitely there. So if you are looking for a phone with a really high quality ultra wide camera, then this phone will get the job done. This photo was taken with the macro camera. As you can see, it captured all those little details really well. I have no complaints about this one either. So overall, as you could see from those examples, this phone does take some really nice photos. Sure, there are several phones in the mid-range and of course flagship phones without a question. Those phones are better than this one as far as camera goes. But at the same time, if you're looking for an entry-level phone, they can take really nice photos that you can even use in professional settings, then this phone will absolutely get the job done. Now for video, this phone has a max shooting quality of 1080p in both the rear and the front cameras, so no 4K or anything like that. But if you do wanna shoot the occasional video, it should be fine. Internally, this phone is getting four gigabytes of RAM with the MediaTek Dimensity 700 processor. This is definitely not a bad processor at all, so I'm impressed to see that it's a phone of this level. I ran a Geekbench 5 benchmark test on the phone and it came back with a single core score of 545 and a multi-core score of 1666. So this is really good, especially for an entry-level phone. I know I keep saying that, but still the fact remains, there are very few phones, if any, that are brand new in this price range that have this kind of performance. There's really not gonna be a whole lot that you can't do with this phone. Even if you wanna play one of the higher-end games like Fortnite, as long as you have a lower graphics setting on, it should run it just fine. For more everyday tasks, like sending text messages, going on the web, using social social media, stuff like that, this phone is also going to be really fast and not to mention it is a 5G phone so you do have access to the 5G network. For the battery, this phone isn't bad either. We got a 4,750 milliamp hour battery, not quite 5,000, I'm not exactly sure what the logic behind that is but it's still a pretty large battery so you're going to get some good battery life throughout the day and down the road in terms of longevity. As the battery starts to degrade, all batteries do, but with larger batteries, it won't hinder the performance nearly as quickly. So as a result, you'll be able to keep the phone a lot longer without having to replace it. So if you do like to keep the same phone and don't like to have to keep getting new ones every year, this phone is gonna be a good choice. My only complaint about the battery is that as far as I can see, there's no real compatibility with fast charging. Now this isn't gonna make a huge difference, except for the fact that if you have a real powerful fast charger like an anchor car charger i actually have one of those it's like 40 watts or something like that it's not going to make a difference with this phone it's not going to charge any faster and to me personally that is a bit of a disappointment because when i'm driving i like to plug my phone into a fast charger and have it back at 100 percent or close to by the time i park and unfortunately with this phone that's probably not going to happen now that's not to say that this phone has a bad battery but compared to a lot of phones even other entry-level phones they usually support at least 10 watt fast charging which is better than nothing but unfortunately i don't think this phone supports any now on the bright side one thing this phone does have is nfc in case you don't know what it is NFC is the technology behind contactless mobile payment services like Google Pay, and those services are becoming more and more widely used. So nowadays, I feel like every phone should have it, but unfortunately, that's just not the case. But luckily, this phone does have it, and that is actually pretty impressive because there are a lot of phones, like for example, the Motorola Moto G Stylus 5G, which is several price levels above this phone, don't have NFC. So seeing that much more expensive phones than this one don't have NFC and this one does is a real good point in favor of this phone. So in conclusion, is the Cricut Dream 5G worth buying in 2021? I would say absolutely it is. 
There's really not a whole lot I don't like about this phone. There's some stuff that might be a little bit less than ideal if you have higher standards, like the fact that it has a 720p display instead of something like a 1080p. The storage is a little bit low if you're a power user. It can't shoot 4K videos. It doesn't support fast charging. And the materials don't really feel very premium. But at the same time, you gotta remember, this is an entry-level phone that you can get for under $200. Most of the time, phones in this price range don't have half the features that this one does. So in comparison to those phones, this phone is actually pretty good. So if you're looking for a phone with a large display, great camera features, a really powerful processor, a decently large battery, and the ability to use NFC, then the Cricut Dream 5G is gonna be a solid option. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And I hope you found this information useful as well. If you did, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And as always, I will see you in the next video.